Hey, Coach, in terms of Will Howard, what are some of the things that he probably needs to improve at the most, and where has he progressed the most? Um, you know, I think he's got to still uh, uh, make sure that he takes care of the football, uh, drive the ball into the windows that he's, that he's throwing it into. Um, had a couple of non the weather conditions were the way they were, but had a couple of balls that they got intercepted last week where it just didn't come out of his hand live enough and, and on a, enough of a line uh, driving the ball. Okay. Um, then, as far as, as, oh. as far as where he's gone, you know, I, I still am extremely happy with his knowledge and understanding and, and, you know, there's a lot coming at him and the defense is in the big 12. It's not like they all just sit in the same coverages over and over again. And the pressures they bring are, are not exotic, but, but they're not, what you're seeing in a high, as a high school player. So just his knowledge of the game has really continued to impress me. I know we've asked you before, and Coach Klein earlier this week, about the third quarter stuff, which is becoming a yeah. little bit of a trend. I know yeah. a lot of it goes back to execution, but is there a reason why the execution has been a little bit poorer in that frame? You know, uh, the, uh, you know, it's something we keep we keep really trying to harp on and hammer on because I don't feel like we've put ourselves in third and extra long or, or situations that we have. Shouldn't have been able to move the chains. Um, but our third downs uh, uh, in the third quarter, third downs have not been good. Um, and we feel like we've put ourselves in numerous third and shorts, third and three, third and four, third and five. And, and good teams move the chains. And, and we've got to put ourselves in better position to make plays and, and then execute those plays in general. And one last thing with the wide receivers. I know it maybe didn't look like on a stat sheet, but it seemed like they had one of their better games of the year. You had, you had really them committing yeah. downfield blocks. Yeah, you know, I felt really good about uh, just how Malik played, how Phillip played, and and then uh, Shabastian has been a, a solid all year, and and we've got to you know we got to keep getting them involved. You know, obviously there's a, an emphasis at times to get deuce the ball, but everybody else has got to have opportunity to go make plays as well. Is that a thing where Malik is getting healthier? Is that why the lights coming on a little bit? Well, just as an example, watching him run the the the, the handoff sweep that we gave to him. And he kind of ran through an arm tackle and then accelerated. Those are the things that he can do when he's healthy. But, but he also has to practice week in and week out to put himself where he feels comfortable and, and confident that he can do those things. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Fitz. Hi, Coach. Uh, in going back and looking at uh, particularly that last series in that game against Baylor, is there anything that, in hindsight, you'd like to change about that? that yeah, yeah. A thousand things, a thousand <laughs> things. Um, obviously, uh, you know, uh, the first down call in general, you know, everybody would say, man, what, what are you doing? Why do you run that play? Uh, unfortunately, they don't realize it was the exact same play that scored a touchdown that Will Howard kept and in, in ran a 23-yard touchdown run or whatever it was. Um, now, the defense played it a little bit different. Um, crazy enough, uh, uh, the biggest thing for me was you have to run the ball on first down to make sure you start the clock. Um, there was about four minutes left in the game, 419, something of that nature. So the first play has got to be a play that gets the clock going. Um, the second down play, uh, again, uh, two drives earlier was the exact same second and long call. Um, obviously, again, uh, they make adjustments. We make adjustments. Um, our, the thing I wish I had over with that one was um, the formation we were in, if we run outside zone, which is what Harry had a big play on, and then the very next play is what uh, – do scored his touchdown on on the 38 yard touchdown run. Um, that's that would have been a much better play in that scenario. Um, unfortunately, we're not a look back team. So once you have it called, uh, unless your quarterback's going to change it, we're rolling with what we have called and, and um, not beating up on Will because it's not on his plate at this time to do that. Um, a senior quarterback that's been in the system for two, three, four years, I think says, hey, wait a minute, it's a, it's a much easier play to run it to the field in that example. But right now, we're not there at this time to, to do those things. You mentioned uh, they defended that first one a little bit different. I gave Will a different look and maybe well, affect his here's the, And I know people don't watch it close enough or, or don't see it when it's happening, but they actually did not get lined up correctly until at the very end, right before we snapped it. You can see number eight yelling at their DN, number 99, to get in his gap. He was lined up in the wrong gap because he's trying to get that guy lined up right, then number eight didn't trigger as fast as what he had done on the touchdown play. They were playing the same defense. They just weren't able to get lined up correctly. So then number eight played it differently. And then and for Will, then that was his read, was to hand it off. Um, so he, he did it correctly. The defense just didn't play it right. Interesting. Butch.
John. Yeah, I apologize, Courtney. I jumped in here a little bit late if any of this has been asked. But just it, it, in general with Will, the, did you see some progress out of him on Saturday? Yeah, well, again, you know, we talked a little bit just uh, the, the first questions or so. Uh, obviously, he's got to drive the ball a little bit more. Um, you know, the, the weather conditions obviously play a little bit of part of that. But I continually am amazed and very happy with his knowledge of the football um, game in general. Um, but, you know, we can go right back to it. If you don't have enough explosives and if you, if, if you turn the ball over, it's hard to win. And, and our defense early was getting all over their offense. Um, and then as it wore on, um, both sides of the ball needed to keep, keep producing. And, and we didn't produce at the, at the very end, which we needed a first down. Actually, we needed probably two or three first downs because they had all their timeouts and there were still four minutes left. But um, we'd have loved to stay on the field and won that game just uh, with the offense on the field. And as a play caller and somebody that's running the offense, how tough is it to find out? I think Chris Kleiman had said it was, what, like an hour before you get on the bus that you're going to be down two offensive linemen. How much does that change the, the game plan for you guys? Uh, your mindset, it changes it quite a bit. But then once uh, once we started playing and we started executing, the uh, ability to run the football was there. Um, you know, now it became pretty much like, Hey, they they're they're handling it. Uh, those two young men that were in there at guard were, were really played fairly well, and and we were able to pretty much run what we would have ran anyway. Then when you look at Texas, what stands out the most? What will be the biggest challenges going up against them? Well, I think the thing that you you notice right out of the gate is just the the size of their defensive line, um, and then when you watch them, how athletic they are. You know, they they moved a linebacker number forty six down to D end, and he's an impact player. He he's he's a He's long, athletic, and, and as you know, as a D end um, with athletic ability of a linebacker, he's a he's a tough matchup. Appreciate it, Courtney. Thanks. You bet. Last one here, Derek. Yeah, Coach Kleiman said that Taylor Fortier would start at guard again. Is the same going to be true with Dawson Del Forge? Um, Taylor, for sure. I'm not sure right now yet what we'll do with the the, the left guard situation. Um, obviously, uh, it's kind of uh, all hands on deck, and, and you know, Coach Riley does a great job making sure those guys understand the scheme. And now it's getting out there and playing and getting your feet wet. And, and you know, as this thing unfolds, we'll, we'll kind of figure out who the best five are as the game gets going. But Taylor definitely is going to going to be a starter. And for Taylor, is is he going to start again, kind of out of necessity, or did he kind of earn that by the way he played last week? Um, Kind of twofold, to be very honest. Uh, it's going to be out of necessity, but he did a phenomenal job. And I think when people watched him play, um, they really saw his athleticism. You know, we, we talked a little bit earlier, uh, uh, you know, he's a young man because of his age. The, the lack of spring ball and the lack of a, a normal fall camp really hurt him. But just as a raw athlete, ability to play a big guy that can really move and run and, and is physical, um, he, really, he really took full advantage of his opportunity. Thanks, Coach.